Hello, we're here now with another segment on the Southern Kent Island Sanitary Project. Uh, today, regarding the public health and environment, and I'm my name is Holly Tompkins. I'm with the Department of Planning and Zoning. I'm a senior planner there, and today I'm speaking with John Nickerson, Director of the Department of Environmental Health. Our first question for you is, would you please give your background and experience regarding the failing septic systems? Well, our office uh, over the years has been the primary regulator of, of septic systems that would have been installed down on Southern Kent Island. It's actually a, a program that started with the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and, and, and now is in the Maryland Department of Environment. And over the years, uh, the septic systems uh, in that particular area have shown uh, characteristics of what we call failing where the sewage either comes to the top of the ground or it backs up into the house, or in some cases uh, it uh, weeps out where it doesn't receive proper treatment before the wastewater goes out into what we call the state's groundwater. And the initial regulations with those agencies that used to control it were not as stringent as they are now, as people recognize more and more methods to properly evaluate a site and the position always was that when they went in, when the particular systems went in because these lots were platted originally without health department approvals, was that they were interim, interim means of waste disposal and that the ultimate permanent way of taking care of the wastewater that is being generated by those homes would have to go to some public sewer entity. And of course, uh, the county built a plant on Kent Island to take care of other failing areas and they expanded their current sewage treatment plant down there in order to accommodate hooking these other homes up that are on southern Kent Island and actually dedicated 500,000 gallons of wastewater capacity for that. So it's been the health department's position that the permanent solution is that the homes would ultimately be connected you know, to public sewer where the wastewater would be properly treated. And, and that's been a long-standing issue that's taken quite a while to resolve. Okay, what are your specific concerns about this situation? One of the uh, strongest limitations of the area is that there's a water table, actual seasonal water table that comes up into the ground and it reaches so close to the ground surface that it fails to let the septic systems properly drain the waste even out of their pipes and it definitely does not provide what we call a treatment zone to clean up the bacteria and the viruses and the pharmaceuticals and the other chemicals that's in the wastewater before it goes into the groundwater. The other issue that is becoming very pressing is that the state regulations only require one in one replacement area for a septic system. And we are now seeing that many of these houses already are, have their second system and they have no physical room in order to accommodate or repair, in order to replace the system. So that has led to us, uh, in with discussion with my current health officer that spoke previously, Dr. Joseph Ciotola, of a holding tank policy that we wrote up and that the Maryland Department of Environment did approve and endorse. And now we will systematically start seeing more of these holding tanks where the sewage does not discharge out of the tank, but it's pumped and hauled by a liquid waste hauler back to the sewage treatment plant, which is a very expensive option. In some instances, probably running between $500 and $800 a month in order to accommodate that type of uh, pumpage. So why are there health risks? The health risks are that when the sewage doesn't drain properly out of the systems, it can back up physically into the house's plumbing which can certainly be an issue if a toilet overflows or if it comes out in the bathtub or whatever. The other issues is if it breaks the ground surface and runs through the grass or gets up into that zone, you have the risk of humans and flies and insects or animals getting in direct contact with it, which poses certain threats depending on whether the people have cuts or, or they put children playing in it and, 
and being able to put, you know, the waste in their mouth, so to speak, by touching their fingers and things. Why are the septic systems failing? They're failing because of the high water table, the slowly permeable soils, and also having inadequate lot sizes in order to properly size a system to take care of the amount of wastewater that's physically flowing, flowing through the dwelling. And in some instances, that's also dependent upon the family size and certain family habits. Some houses will generate more wastewater than others. But as a generalized statement, those three strikes, small lot sizes, seasonal high water tables, and slowly permeable soils pre present a scenario of severe limitations in order to continually get rid of the wastewater in, on on-site basis. Okay, so essentially environmental health solutions for this situation are well, it is public sore, as I told you, said earlier in the, in, the, in the presentation. Our position has always been that this is an interim means of waste disposal, the permanent solution that's been recognized for years. Every town or can, uh, where there's a, um, a large uh, number of homes or a cluster of properties ultimately have had to deal with how they handle the wastewater. And, the recognized method is to do a proper sewage treatment plan and dispose of it properly. Great. Thank treat you. It, treat it and dispose of it. Thank you for your time.